converting in Hearts of Iron 4. It is a mechanic that isn't used very frequently. It was a massive mechanic in the past, but it got nerfed to oblivion. However, there is a new exploit on the horizon. It is mm, semi-OP, semi-OP. And uh, it allows you to convert and use significantly less resources, about 80% less resources. And this was brought to my attention by Dereal Burning Death. Damn, dark name, sounds like a metal band. And uh, he's found a method of converting and it uses 90% less resources. Wow, new exploit. Uh, this does not work with planes because I've tested it, but it does work with tanks. So what I thought I'd do is I show this exploit off, but I also talk a little bit by, about converting in Hoi 4 and uh, whether you should do it, when it's applicable. And it, it, do you know, is it even worth it in the long run? A ignoring the exploit. So pop into Hoi 4 and let's have a little look. Oh yeah, let's give an actual real world example then. So at the very start of the game in Hoi 4, we're deleting the entirety of the army. Bop pop and if you look into the logistics we'll wait a single day there you go logistics are updated and you can see here light tanks if you click on light tanks you can see that we have uh, panzer one 720 of them and also panzer twos we have two of those this uh, orange number represents production i presume yeah it's weekly weekly production ah weekly production i got i could be confused then for a second i was thought, thought that was daily production because it shows the daily amount here but it shows the full weekly amount oh, fair enough. Oh, i'm learning i'm learning Anyway, so you've got loads of Panzer 1s, right? So why don't we convert them to Panzer 2s, right? Is that possible? Is that doable? Yes. Well, no, it actually isn't. It used to be. The way it used to work is you'd be able to upgrade one variant to the next chassis uh, part of using conversion. So you could go from a, I guess we'll call this the interwar. Then there's light tank 1, then there's light tank 2, and that's light tank 3. And in the past, you could have the ability to upgrade one chassis to the next one. However, that feature was mad OP, but unfortunately has been completely stripped and removed from the game. And you could even convert from like a light tank two to a light tank three tank destroyer. It would allow really insane combinations. But think about it in the real world, that doesn't even make sense, doesn't it? You're like, you're basically changing the entire chassis, the body of the vehicle, you're changing the turret, and at that point, it's like, well, what is part of the original vehicle? Not a lot. I think in your mind, you have to imagine it like they're scrap metaling it and reforming the metals. But if it's a cast iron chassis, how is that even possible? You'd have to melt the whole thing down and then it'd be all scrap metal anyway. Anyway, use your imagination. Imagination. So let's show an example that is actually worth it. Uh, first thing I'm going to test is whether it's possible to convert a light tank one into a variant. So this is your standard light tank, tend to be really good for armor and breakthrough and hardness. However, you can convert it to a variant version, which is more proficient at a certain role. The light tanks are kind of multi-role, but the variants kind of are more specific for a certain duty, such as shooting down planes, soft attack or hard attack, or piercing. Uh, so in this case, what we'll do is we'll grade this light tank one and by adding on a close, no, we'll go for the basic anti-air gun and change it to that variant. Oh, look at this baby. You rarely see this model. Just cheating some XP. Save that boy. And then you can see the basic SP anti air. So, my presumption would be is you'd be able to convert these Panzer 1s into Panzer 1 AAs, right? Would that be the presumption? Would I be right in saying that? Let's delete the whole queue. We'll assign a mile because why not? Uh, we'll wait a single day. And you can see the convert button is here and you can do that so this is probably the probably the most effective use of this you're converting an old model and you're converting it to a variant which is a, a significantly different turret on top i mean that's the biggest difference between the variant it's either got an artillery piece on the top it's either got a long barrel for a tank destroyer or it's got an anti-air gun on top so you're basically changing pulling off the turret and putting another turret on and if you click this button you go from 2.74 a day to 6.9 per day so you roughly get more than 100 percent more production sometimes more uh, based on loads of factors in the game but we'll go into those in a second and what you're basically doing now is converting your panzer ones into panzer one anti-air variants and we can see these here you see the number going up significantly but you can see the stockpile of the light tanks is going down so they're being potentially converted so just one thing to be aware of converting is really cool because you're getting basically the, the tank that you want However, just be aware that you don't actually increase the overall pool of tanks. To be fair, the pool of tanks stays exactly the same. So sometimes it's not even worthwhile to convert. It's best just to kind of make more of the new tank and then just use the old ones as part of the division anyway. However, it's a bit more difficult with an anti-air version because they're different battalions. In this case, we have this is the, the Panzer 1 and then the anti-air variant has to be on a different row is this one. So this makes it a little bit more difficult to do because you can't just straight one for one. 
this light tank one could be a light tank one it could be a light tank two it could be a light tank three it could be all the variations of light tanks in any way shape and form it could be an interwar light tank however this has to be specifically a version that has is an artillery tank and the reason why it creates a bit of confusion and also when you create a new line it costs 25 xp which i think is way too high making templates in holy four just costs way too much they need to change the way that works because i feel like it's just too much however i will say the changes they made to the division designer is actually a massive plus like switzerland so if you cover over this one you can actually see the differences and you can see stability makes a factor limited exports makes a factor but plus initially when you convert something it normally has double a lot amount of production you can get a breakdown of that if you go into uh the actual tank and you can see the actual raw production cost and then if you go into this one you can see the conversion cost as far as i'm aware there isn't anything that's not worthwhile changing because they're all based on the actual value of production just halved or more or less so it would make sense that if cast armor would like be something you wouldn't want to change because when you refit ships at changing engines or big batteries is not worth it because the production cost tends to cost more than a whole brand new ship anyway and what's the point in converting one when you can have two you know but when it comes down to tanks it doesn't need to make much difference now in the olden days there was an exploit where you could kind of produce more tanks than you actually were making by using the, the conversion mechanics but, Hoy, but paradox has gotten pretty smart with that recently and so that's no longer possible so i don't even want to talk about that because you guys don't want to mess around with that because it's not even applicable anyway Let's try something kind of wonky though. So let's try and convert something. So from a Panzer one, there's the Panzer one, this one. And then we'll basically make it cheaper. So we're gonna remove the radio. We're gonna add on a wheeled suspension, which reduces the production cost. And then we're gonna also strip it of armor and engines. So what I've done there is I've made the original Panzer one, but made it significantly cheaper. However, you're making the tank cheaper, but you still have to pay the conversion cost. So this is a net loss overall. You're getting less stats from your tank, but you're also kind of making them worse. So this is never really a good real world scenario. In fact, in fact, this is so bizarre that it costs more to convert here than it to make a brand new one. Look, so I'm producing about seven per day. But if I convert, I'm producing five per day. It, there's no reason you want to downgrade tanks. There's no reason you want to do that as a part of refitting. If you are downgrading tanks, just produce brand new ones. Don't convert them down. So upgrading seems to be worth it. Downgrading, God, is a straight no-no. Never do that. When it comes to cost effectiveness, I feel like the best upgrades are definitely ones when you change the variants over. That's where you get the most bang for your buck. The, the biggest issue is I don't use refitting very frequently because I kind of feel like sometimes it's just better to make more of the brand new vehicle, which I said before, I'm repeating myself. The big factor that can affect converting is also this one, production efficiency. So not, is not only raw production based on production efficiency, it also affects uh, conversions of stockpiles as well. Uh, so if you do have something that's gaining a lot of production efficiency as a raw production, you'll gain a lot from uh, converting as well. And as you can see, this number's increasing because of production efficiency is going up over time. So that's another factor as well. You tend to find that converting early game is less effective than late game because what happens is you end up into uh, a situation where you get like modifier stacking overload. So when you stacked all of these, particularly actually, there's an instance here where con uh, concentrate is more effective than dispersed, but then you have to take into account the production efficiency. Mm, I don't know, it's debatable that one. That, we'll say that for another day. But regardless, if you stack all of these, you basically get at least 50 or 70 percent it's 15 for these so 15 whatever anyway regardless of that base amounts of construction go up significantly plus if you've got an extra production efficiency you gain overall more production as well so for instance i'll give you an example here right now the conversion rate is 7.39 if we go into stacker overload by going for production efficiency cap concentrated and we also have these special ones as well these were added in a, in a patch a while back but it's 40 percent more conversion so generally you tend to get one brand new whole tank at the full price but you can convert at kind of half the price roughly it depends on the cost of the upgrade depending on if you've stacked more stuff onto that actual tank but it all scales based on the production cost if you want to see the production cost just look at the tank design and just look at the number at the bottom which indicates how much it's going to cost to refit anyway but with this in mind this makes converting more worthwhile more of a late game thing though so now we've gone up from 7.39 to 17.6 so this sentence is like an exponential growth. Look at the conversion rate now. 
we keep going up per day based on production efficiency hence the reason why i said before converting tends to be more effective when you get towards 1940 and then you kind of stack more of the modifiers it becomes super more effective over time before we know it, we're going to run out of light tanks. Oh, no, we're not com no, we're running out of tank ones. And they go, and we've run out. There you go. So the tank one, the old variant, has been destroyed. And now we can't convert anymore. We're just producing brand new and fresh models. But you can basically see here that there's kind of a exponential growth when you start to stack more of the modifiers, particularly when it comes down to the production efficiency, which starts to go through the absolute effing roof when you get higher amounts. So I'll give you a realistic scenario so let's say you're germany you're invading barbarossa and you're using a really girthy medium tank uh, let's give an example let's say the 1940 medium tank uh it's got cast armor it's got an absolutely big fat barrel on it and you're realizing to yourself man this is an expensive tank i'll give you an example of this is not meta guys i know the multiplayer guys get so upset i don't know why you multiplayer guys watch my videos i have never been a multiplayer channel but you guys still in the comments every single day telling me this is shit in multiplayer well done welcome welcome to my channel clearly you don't have any hindsight to know that this isn't a multiplayer channel put it that way anyway so give you an example here uh we're producing something like this with a three band turret and it's got a decent barrel on it we'll say i don't know these are bad examples because it's only a small cannon but let's say it's got cast armor as well it's got loads of armor on it as well loads of engines as well this is an example you're producing this specific tank and this is your tank that you're using for barbarossa uh it's pretty good really because it's got decent breakthrough in armor so that should be worthwhile however you start to sustain significant losses and you can't produce enough new tanks to keep up the production queue now that's a bad example as well because if you've run out of actual tanks there's nothing to convert anyway as well as the instances if you are winning which at that point if you're already winning what's the even point i'm, I'm having a debate with myself here guys I'm having a debate here. Yeah. I'm, I'm having a debate in the mirror. But here's an example. Basically, you have lots of Panzer Fours in the stockpile. And uh, you know that you can improve the stats of your tank significantly by refitting. Uh, so in that case, you would basically improve the tank, whatever form you would do. By adding armor on, for instance. And improving the engine. Through 32% reliability. Nice. And with that in mind, you could start converting to add better stats onto the, the tank. I suppose in another example, you had machine guns on, wouldn't you? So they're basically getting loads of soft attack and then you're converting over and that way you're feeding stats directly into the vision because you're adding significantly more soft attack into the division itself this is a weird scenario because it's like you if you've got a massive stockpile of medium tanks you've kind of already won and i hate that you know because sometimes i feel like the, there are key strategies that work in hoi but when you've kind of already won what is kind of the point I don't know, this is just a situation where converting is kind of applicable. Either producing 1.9 per day or 4.1. I suppose that makes it a little bit more worth it. And you're feeding soft attack directly into the division because um, in this case, it's got significantly more soft attack. And if you compare them, you can say we've gone from 10 soft attack to 22 soft attack. Wow, more than double. Anyway, you're here for the exploit anyway. Let's talk about the exploit. Let's research all. Dave, you're cheating. Why cheat, Dave? Come on, Dave. You're deceiving us. So let's give you an example. So one thing you rarely see in my games in Hoi 4 is I very rarely go for the big turrets. Now, the reason I don't go for the big turrets is because they have incredibly eye-watering resource costs. Look at that. Can you see that? Resource used per factory, per factory, just one mil will cost you five tungsten and two chromium for this turret. I don't know why you'd put a super heavy cannon on a heavy tank. You can only do that if you make it a fixed turret as well. But the problem with a fixed turret is you lose significant amount of breakthrough. And I guess it has to be a tank destroyer as well, which also loses you more breakthrough. I've seen the issue with tank destroyers. They've got great heart attack and piercing, uh, but they lose massive amounts of breakthrough. And breakthrough is a really good start to have. I'll be honest with you, I always come back to the raw tanks a lot of the time. The regular tanks have overall the best, more well-rounded stats, unless you're specifically trying to get something like anti-air. Would you go for an anti-air variant? Anyway, let's uh, let's think of a realistic scenario. So we'll go for the medium tank again. Advanced medium. We're going to go for cheapest chips. So we'll add a machine gun onto it, riveted armor. And then we've got the actual cost here, of just the steel, which is just the raw cost of the vehicle. And boom, start producing that. And producing 23 per day because they're unbelievably cheap. And the bonus with this is the chassis is awesome. Anyway, so what you do with this is you upgrade it to uh, a different tank. Let's just get rid of these because these are kind of distractions. So you want to upgrade this to a better tank that has uses a lot of stats. So for instance, as I said to you before, the big cannons, the big juicy cannons need a bigger turret to fit the, the 
turrets on some medium armaments but then we'll go for something that requires a huge amount of resources the biggest one is the improved high velocity two tanks of one chromium two steel so if you were to produce this tank raw and really annoyingly the tank design doesn't actually show the numbers but we'll also go for cast armor we'll also go for the sneeze bore adapter squeeze bore squeeze which adds extra tungsten costs. I'm basically looking for everything that increases the production of resources. Because the beauty of this exploit is it allows you to produce costs at a significantly higher amount because it has a higher production cost to refit. It's always better to produce one raw tank than it is to refit under certain circumstances. And I'll say to you right now, it's difficult to find those circumstances because a lot of time they're not very uh, applicable. I gave you one example before, but once again, that's just what's one of those... I've already won the game scenarios if you get my drift. Just realize this is a level 5 Mayo. So in this case, we're basically going to be upgrading the extra armor. By the way, the ones with the chevrons here, these are the unique ones. This is unique for Germany. One of my strategies here is to try to stack the production efficiency cap ones so you can pump them out in high volume. We assign the Mayo. So what I've done here is I've produced a raw tank. Now this raw tank, so this tank, when you produce it raw, only requires two steel. Okay. Now this tank, when you produce it, requires four steel, three tungsten, and one chromium. Remember, this is the cost per mil. So, if we produce this, it has unbelievably high production costs, right? However, you can bypass most of these resource costs by upgrading. You have to specifically say this is a decommissioned model, though, because now it can basically see that there's an upgrade possibility. So instead of needing four, three, one, if we refit, this is not even a good example. We're only saving two steel. Oh my God, has Paradox patched it automatically? Paradox, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Have you patched this already? <laughs> Let me have a look at the, uh, the post. So the example that he uses is this tank, which is a high velocity riveted from a machine gun. And you're basically making a significantly cheaper cost. Let's see if I can give an example with a... Oh, but this is a high velocity as well. Let's get rid of the sneeze bore. Go with riveted as well. So the cost for this is one, sorry, two, two, one. And if I, hang on, sorry, four, two, two. Yeah, it seems to me that the only resources you're specifically saving is just the steel. I wonder if this has been patched. Makes an unbelievably disappointing video for you guys. <laughs> I mean, you are saving some resources here. You're consuming less steel overall. Yeah, you're consuming less steel overall. Even though the, the production cost raw is the same. No, it's not. Two to four, yeah. So it's, particularly while you are saving some resources. This applies late game as Germany, particularly in multiplayer scenarios where you want to try and minimize uh, the amount of resources you and overall. This, for some odd reason, this is not working exactly where this Reddit post works. Let's have a look. Yes, it was posted yesterday. Okay, so it's very fresh. And he says in his example, you save 34 steel, 14 tungsten and 14 chromium. I don't understand what's happening here because I'm not set making those big savings. I'm only saving 50% steel. Hey, listen, listen, just just zoom back a minute. Hide your disappointment. If you're saving 50% steel on your tank production, that's pretty fucking huge. Because if you increase those amounts exponentially, he's going from 51 steel to 26. That's a massive discount in steel, particularly in late game. And it is a resource that you tend to run out of late game as well. However, you also run out of chromium and tungsten too, as Germany. Hmm. Hmm. Now, let's go big. Let's go big. If your objective is to save resources, then this method is effective, particularly for steel. However, I can't seem to recreate it for any other resource. Maybe we try a different kind of gun. Let's try the howitzer. So for instance, one here is five steel, one tungsten and one chromium. And if I convert it, we're saving 50% on steel production. Well, it's less than 50% actually, but we're not saving anything on tungsten or chromium. Once again, for some reason, it's not working the exact way that Reddit posts. But still, there's a discount there for steel, for instance. In late game, if you are in a steel uh, deficiency, that can be a way of stealing, saving a huge amount of steel. Rewind. So if your objective is to save a massive amount of steel, there is a new function that they've added to the game, and it involves myos. So if you go into your tank myo and it's gone to level six, it has to be level six. And you gain to level six by gaining funding and producing and using that myo or using it as a research. But when it reaches level six, which the game should let you know if you reach level six, this is an important factor. You could spend a tiny little bit of political power, very small amount. I don't know why it's so small. For instance, I think this number should be higher, but that's just my take anyway. And you can select a policy. And one of the policies is eye-watering OP. And it is 
vertical integration building up and what this means is all production under this myo will need 10 percent less resources overall however ooh, there is a big however if in that scenario you still with the less resources that you need for the raw production of the tank go over that requirement uh, you will sustain a bigger penalty for having less resources does that make sense basically less raw resource overall however if you go over the penalty for having not enough resources the penalty will be more harsh you kind of get it so it kind of works, works both ways you need to have the resources in a perfect equilibrium but overall the late game this is massive so i'll show you an example so we'll integrate this myo and upgrade it oh is it automatically upgraded just to like that thank you man yes yeah, so you can see there's a myo assigned because there's like a piece of paper here usually I have to kind of assign the myo on that's actually really good Pe pigeon in the chat just said if it's something that has vertical integration it might be better up into the very top of the production queue because then it's less likely to have production penalties so you'll be taking advantage of more raw resources but significantly not having to deal with that penalty or least likely to deal with that penalty i thought you had to physically upgrade the the tank variant anyway this tank 15 factories uses 57 steel 12 tungsten and 12 chromium and if we take advantage of vertical integration by assigning the myo in question which is this one the cost is exactly the same <laughs> what's going on here let's just reload the save and you know what's funny is i've actually tested this in game before and i know this works i know this works but for some bizarre reason the numbers are not going down and i have no idea why man this is complete opposite day today isn't it boys everything i'm testing everything i'm showing it's <laughs> just not working maybe we try and upgrade the myo by adding a an extra slot but now we're gonna upgrade the tank pop save save and change and the resources are exactly the same does anyone know what's going on here change the myo on the production not the one not the module what's happening here this is not working the way it should light tanks a medium tank this is a medium tank does it take 180 days to apply my understanding is it's only 180 days until you can change the policies it's a bug i guess so but what's strange is i've tested this in the past and this worked totally fine let's do it with a light tank this is a bad example of light tank because light tanks don't even use that many resources. It's one of the advantages of light tanks. They just don't use many resources. Go for a, an interwar chassis. That's a heavy cannon on it. Heavy cannon too. Oh, I just broke the queue then. 34, 12, 12. If we make a version that doesn't have the Mayo. 34, 12, 12. What am I missing here? 45, 50. Oh shit. It's not the variant oh boom boom God, i would have never figured this out you know what's confusing some of these require 5 xp to make the variant like this one does hardness and armor does production yeah a load of these require 5 xp to make a variant but this one's different you have to assign it on for the production queue and not the variant but look at the difference in price so 45 15 15 and it drops to 34 12 12. once again late game situation when you're pumping out those resources that is astronomically huge so in this case 29 factories onto panther production 145 steel 29 tungsten 29 chromium we assign the myo and we significantly shave off steel production that feels more than 10 percent am i going mad that feels more than 10 percent that's around about 40% at least, right? So 109, 145 to 109. That's massively OP. One of the big issues late game Hoi 4 is you run out of resources in the world. It happens in multiplayer games all the time. And that's why in multiplayer games, they're mad about excavation techs and uh, doing the prospect for resources because resources eventually do run out. And at that point, production runs to a halt and making more mills is a waste of time. Anything that can reduce the overall resource usage is absolutely massive. Well, there we go, guys. This is why I love making these videos, guys. I learn about the mechanics as well. There are other examples of Myos that do reduce resources that aren't policies. For instance, Opal 
but this actually increases the resource production by two percent two percent is so small that means for every 100 steel applied to trucks it would require plus two steel that's such an insignificant small amount i don't even feel like it's worth worrying about no this is not a good example either i can't think of any others that change the resource requirement there are a few hidden away though i think oh yeah there's also one other final noteworthy example for conversion is the soviets have a myo dedicated to conversion is it this one the tank refurbishment plant increases conversion speed by plus 15 minus three production cost for tanks that's mad strong this one is really interesting too loses hardness so it's basically losing one of the core stats of tanks which is pretty shitty but 20 percent less resources what these ones merge these ones so soft attack production speed they're not really that great but this one is definitely significant this one if i was to max out this myo hang on, hang on. oh hang on, hang on i didn't read that correctly it specifically says for armor no for armor so boom boom so there's two significant ones here reducing the overall conversion and this one also reducing resource cost and then you would pair that up oh you can't pair it up ah okay all right okay oh no no there it is vertical integration so it's there i thought i thought for a second that you couldn't uh add them together but you can some of these are unique these policies heavy gantry cranes increases production efficiency for heavy tanks interesting factory <laughs> applied camouflage defense and breakthroughs with tanks oh my god cutting corners actually it's really cool as well 10 percent production cost is massive reduction anyway vertical integration all right should we see an example then the super it's not a super heavy tank it's a heavy tank they have also we'll have the super heavy cannon on it fixed superstructure tank destroyer we'll have the sneeze bore adapter let's just go extreme let's just go ham with this i think this is the best i can do I don't think there's anything else that increases resource cost. Uh, so, for instance, I remove the Mayo from this. So, this is two modifiers. This is one for the policy, which is specifically for the production line. And one, was, one of those is a specific variant. So, for instance, right now, if we produce this one, that's so much tungsten. Who else has a lot of tungsten? Raj. So, right now, with the 40 military factories on this heavy tank, 56 steel, 84 chromium, 168 tungsten. Oh, but it's also, it's already applying that 30% resource production. The shield machine building plant. Is that what it's called? Or am I thinking of something different here? Machine building plant? Oh, hang on. There we go. Ah, there's the real numbers. There's the real numbers. 80, 120, 240. Wow, wow, wow. Then we make it a specific tank refurbishment plant. Is this going to drop the resource cost? No, it's the same resource cost so it's specifically all tied to the production line so the difference would be if i don't select a mile these are the costs 81 22 40 but then if i assign uh the building plant it drops it down to 56 80 468 jeez that's insane once again in summary this is late game super late game don't get excited about this don't try to tech towards it it is specifically one of those solutions when you have too many military factories and you need to start producing stuff but you're unfortunately suffering from a big resource penalty but it would definitely definitely benefit you in the super late game situations you're producing minus tanks you've reached the overflow limit where it's uh the number goes too high but it goes into the z minus zero <laughs> it's something for mp it is it applies to single player in those little, little sprinkly situations in end game. Multiplayer is like mad essential. In summary, it is quite worthwhile to upgrade old variants of tanks to new versions, particularly ones that have got artillery, anti-tank variants, or maybe tank destroyers. Uh, it also is worth it in some situations when you've got a mad stockpile of tanks and you want to add a lot of soft attack by adding machine guns onto it that's a really good instance to add to add stats to your division however for the vast majority of the time upgrading early game is not worth it and upgrading if you're struggling with your stockpile is not worth it as well it is one of those extreme late game situations where it's just really not that useful and to be fair if you do get all the bonuses with these ones which you i wouldn't recommend you tech into unless they're late game anyway they will become more useful 
But once again, the situations where it's most applicable to go for converting don't really benefit you unless it's those niche, smallish scenarios. Guys, converting. Unfortunately, I've come away from this one not wanting to do it ever. <laughs> but maybe it's something you want to take advantage of. If anyone's got a situation where they've used it and it was more applicable and useful in your scenario, please let me know in the comments below. Apart from that, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.